Professionals are just about ready to bowl at North Rock Lanes in Sprawling, Wichita, Kansas. Listen to that standing room only crowd for the finals of the 140,000 Wichita Open. A field of five. Hello again. I'm Chris Schenkel with my colleague Nelson Burton Jr. We expect an exciting telecast of 90 minutes. Field of five, a total of 34 tournaments. There are three left-handers, two from the right side, and here's my right-hander, Bo Burton. Well, thank you, Chris. Uh, back in Wichita for the fifth time, an exciting field. So let's take a look at the players in today's championship round. In the first game, it's two-time champion Brian Goble. He'll face former Rookie of the Year Ricky Ward in the number four position from North Myers, North Fort Myers, Florida. The winner of that match will meet the 1991 Player of the Year, David Ozio. In the semifinal game, we'll see non-winner Kurt Von Kruger of Pensacola, Florida. And our tournament leader could move past Earl Anthony in the fourth place in the PBA career earnings list, Mike Albee of Indianapolis, Chris. And let's take a look at how much of that $140,000 prize fund they're bowling for today. 23 will go to the winner of this event and 12 to the runner-up. 75, 6,000, and the loser of this first game, $5,000. Ricky Ward, short, compact, bowling from the left side, going against a native of Kansas, born in Kansas City, Kansas. 31 years ago, now uh, living in Merriman, Brian Goble, six footer, 165 pounds, 11th appearance on television. So, Bo, we're off and running. Well, solid field, Chris. Uh, only one player kind of uh, in uncharted territory, and that's uh, Kirk Von Kruger. So, Ricky Ward, who's just a gutsy, tough player, who's really come on the scene and come into his own this year, is up with his first shot. And from North, Fort Myers, Florida, Ricky evens up the match. The winner of the Johnny Petraglia, North Brunswick, second telecast this year. Ricky Ward, just a solid style. He's a, a spark plug at five feet, six inches tall, top of his backswing, straight on through. But notice how solidly he hits at the foul line. He's on balance with his foot. One of the key things you can watch on a player is how well they're balanced. If they're up on the toes, the ball will often be weak. So the winner of one national title and two regional, both in Florida, in Merritt Island, and Melbourne as a double. Now, Brian Goble. <laughs> Ten pin, the man that shot a 246 last night to climb from eighth to this position. Brian Goble at six feet. 165 pounds, takes a six-step delivery, so it gives himself time to make adjustments through the swing, a big, long arc. Once again, very important to hit the line solid, especially on these synthetic lanes. You can see he's right on balance there. The defending champ of this event, Mike Miller, finished 30th. And finishing 31st was our statistician, Butch Soper, he's cashed in 12 of 13. Brian Goble with that six-step delivery. Pretty standard position on the line. He's going to drift a little bit left from this position. He'll end up right around the center of the lane and be playing the ball between the second and third arrows. for Brian Goble. Now Ricky Ward. 
where you are. Do you see this little seam on the lane? That's down there about 30 feet. These are synthetic lanes. They're laid down in 12-foot strips, and that's the seam between the two strips. Three in a row for Ricky Ward, who shares with us now some sage advice he received when he started on tour. I would say the best advice that I've been given would probably come from Wayne Webb when he told me back years ago of keeping the ball straighter will take away the, the splits, make you more accurate, and as long as you keep the power and the lift, you should have no problem being successful on tour. Turned 25 yesterday. Happy birthday, Ricky. Four in a row. One landmark in the Wichita area is called Keeper of the Flame by Black Bear Poison. Famous panels. Brian, however, has a strike up shooting in the fourth frame of this first game. Opponent. Brian Goble from Merriman, Kansas, is a real believer in hometown support. Well, I'm not sure that uh, I have an advantage unless I, if I get to bowling well and the pins start falling, then the momentum could shift because the crowd might really get behind me. And once the crowd gets behind me, you know, it'll pump me up and, and hopefully I'll take me all the way. All right. trails by only 10. Brian Goble. Ricky Ward, who credits his girlfriend Lisa Fry with helping him win his first title in North Brunswick, New Jersey. Ricky Ward, perfect through five. Very solid game. He cut down the big hook ball to get a little more direct and stay underneath the bowling ball. Has avoided the bad games on the Pro Bowlers Tour and now finds himself in a position to become a big star out here. He starts on the left side. He'll drift right towards the center. His target will be right over the third. He'll draw a line through there, stay inside out with it, and he'll get six in a row. Halfway for $10,000. Oh, the pressure is on Brian Gobel, who has three in a row. He started with a strike, then marked with a spare ever since striking, shooting in the sixth frame. Three, six, ten. A little tug by Brian there as uh, the pressure of six in a row staring him in the face uh, caused him to pull the ball a little bit inside his target, more towards the center of his lane, avoids the split. And Brian has a very solid spare technique as you see him avoiding the left side pins by killing the ball. He flattens his wrist, throws it perfectly straight across the lane, depends completely on accuracy. Good shot. And uh, there is Kelly. Joined here in Wichita by Brian's mom, Mary Lou. And at the last minute, brother Scott showed up. Miriam, Kansas on the east coast of the state of Kansas near Overland Park. Now Brian trailing by 33, seventh frame. The big four, Chris, four, six, seven, ten. Brian felt that one of those big improvements he's made is going back to a six-step delivery because his speed control was so solid. What he needs to do, right, really to try to make this is to get over here to the six, ten and try to slide the six into the four, seven. I believe that's the best avenue to take a whack at it. So it's the first open frame of the afternoon coming here in our very first game. And the lead jumps to 44. So here is Ricky Ward, who rooms with 
Steve Hoskins and Curtis Odom. Rookie of the year in 1991. Seventh frame, the seven pin. Quickly up with another ball. Match well in hands. He leads by 48 with a conversion. <laughs> Chris Ricky Ward has bowled so well this year. Last year he was plagued by back problems and knee problems. He had his knee surgery and really struggled to only 17,000 last year. So far this year, he's up over 50,000. It can add to that, obviously, today. But his game is so solid, as you see how he got there through 46 game, 42 games, six rounds. Back to perfection again here in Wichita. You know, one way to see the Old Town Antique District of Wichita is to take a trolley ride. So. Hop on board. We're nearing the end now of our very first game here at North Rock Lanes in Wichita, Kansas. The native of Kansas, Brian Goble, trailing by 48 pins, shooting in the eighth frame, following an open. four pin on the right lane. Brian has cashed in 30, 13 of 22 events this year. And it's the second telecast appearance of the year. He finished second in Kennewick, Washington earlier. Now for the spare. And now to Bo Burton. Thank you, Chris Schenkel. David Ozio, you're in the next match, and it looks like you're going to be the uh, the great right hope out there. They'll be all lefties left. Any chance for you? Well, I don't know. There's uh, When I signed on with the PBA 15 years ago, uh, you know, they said there would be obstacles to be faced, and I think I have three of the largest obstacles I've faced yet coming up here in the next uh, three matches. I just uh, hope that I can throw 36 of the best shots I've ever thrown in my life. Because that's probably what it's going to take to beat these guys. He's tough, Chris, and he'll be in there right shortly. Back to you. Okay. Brian Goble. <laughs> Nice spring strike for Brian Goble. Uh, Ricky taking plenty of time. Comfortable lead. Ricky Ward just solid as a rock. He'll be in this area. Watch it coming right to the foul line, and his target will be right around the center dots there. And look at how solid he is at the line. Okay, you know, next Saturday, ABC's Pro Bowlers Tour checks into Oklahoma for the final stop of the season. Bowling's hottest shots take aim at the Choice Hotel's Summer Classic. That's next Saturday at 3, 2 Central on ABC Sports with a unique format and a lot of money at stake. Now, Ward playing this lane a little bit different. He's a little bit farther left, and he's going to go a little straighter towards the pocket. He's zero. Only a spare in the seventh frame for this lefty. Possible 279, as I spoke earlier, the great performance he had at Johnny Petragli Open earlier this winter on ABC, where he defeated Walter Ray Williams Jr. in a solid field as the tournament leader. He's carried it right over this week. Very confident, great arm swing. Seemingly nonchalant. Well, his big improvement was somewhat in confidence as all good players get on the tour, but it's in his footwork. He is so solid at that line with that solid four-step delivery. Let's watch his footwork pattern. Very slick approaches here. Boom. See how solid he is? On balance. Getting a tap. 
from his opponent for just a wonderful performance of 279. Surprising performance. We didn't think that scoring was out there today as Ricky Ward has overpowered Brian Goble, who has bowled very well all week long. Solid nine, it would made no difference. The best he could have bowled was 221, a spare and a strike. Goble with a solid, solid game. He had two open, two bad shots, six and seventh frames. Not reflective of the score he's bowling. 201 could have been much more, but never enough to catch more. Ricky Ward, who will go against David Ozio, another right-hander. Goble will be back. I feel the most improved player and one of the best natural athletes we have on the tour. Stays behind that ball and solid all the way. Two PBA titles. His last was 1991 Riverside. Prior winning in Tucson. So it is. 279 to 200 as ABC Sports presentation of the Professional Bowlers Tour will return after this message. At a By quality, comfort, clarion, and sleep hotels. By AMF Bowling. AMF, an official sponsor of the PBA Tour. And by Fixident. Fixident and forget it. Proprietor John Crumb has brought him out in droves here to watch the likes of Ricky Ward and what a show he put on with 11 strikes. 279 to Brian Goebbels, 200. 5,000 for Brian. So it'll be Ricky Ward now going against the Texan, David Ozio. And uh, he's already given notice that he's found the groove from the left side. Well, he's had a few practice shots down there. He's playing with the crowd right now. And Ozio is a proven champion of player mm. of the year. And so uh, he's going to give Ward all he can take. So let's take a look at the other players and how they finished in the field. 179-man field, solid averages. They broke the 300 record this, this week. 162 300s have been bowled on the tour so far this year. John Mazzo, I have to say, to all friend, uh, say hi to all his friends at Burning Tree Country Club. Parker Bone was in contention. Big Tony Westlake. Hoskins, former Rookie of the Year. Pete Weber, solid as usual. Kelly Kaufman, a local favorite. The Beast in 16th place. Justin Romack, he was, had the crowd behind him all week long. Mark Williams having a terrific year. John Forrest, 23rd, and Big Studley Bill Swanson round out the top 24. And we're in Wichita this week. We don't have far to go to Edmond, Oklahoma. For the Choice Hotel's Summer Classic, a combination of the best from the senior tour and the best of the touring professionals. A bowler has an opportunity to win $63,000. That's a lot of bucks. Chris will uh, update our viewers on the interesting format later on in our telecast today. But now in our second match, let's see if Ricky Ward can get out to the quick lead against Ozio that he did get against Brian Goble. First shot. Six pin for the man that was one of nine to shoot a perfect 300 game. Ricky Ward qualified fourth, but he had trouble striking in the, in the crucial 10th frames yesterday, and it might be working on his mind. He had a chance to lead this tournament in the 42nd game against Albee last night. And he left a six pin just like that shot. And so if Ozio can press him here to the 10th, I think the advantage swings to David Ozio. The 1991 player of the year, Bider, Texas. Smooth and powerful. Mr. Practice in the sport of bowling. He's versatile. He's taking four steps today. He's getting the ball away in perfect position. Look at all these positions. Now watch how he hits the foul line again. Watch how solid he is with that left foot. Look at that. You know, if you rotate up onto the toe of your slide foot, the ball is weak. You get your shoulders over your knees. Ozio stays back so well. So he's left a four. You know, he's bowling so good today, Chris. You know, it's just like a baseball pitcher. Some days you have it and some you don't. 
third pin on the left hand part of your screen, the two pin goes flying around the four pin. He's throwing so good that he's disappointed every time he doesn't strike. But he continues to mark. You know, tonight, John Ritter is in love, but she's getting married to his brother. Mel Harris and John Ritter star in My Brother's Wife, followed by the commission, all coming up tonight on ABC. What a nice break for Ricky Ward, who won the first game 279 to Brian Goebel's 200. This is the opposite of the four pin for the lefty. The three pin goes to the sideboard and trips out the, the, misses the six, but trips out the eight. Just one thing to watch for as we go along in today's 90 minute telecast, these lanes have had a tendency to dry up. The oil on the lanes have dried up and the players had them continually move all day long. In fact, when they started, say for the right-handers, they were playing around the second arrow in the morning and by the evening they were playing the fifth arrow. So mm -hmm. each of these players, both the lefties and righties, the only righty left, Ozio, will have to be aware of that and make adjustments. Another thing to look forward to, Bo, is the 21-year Navy veteran who is in his first TV telecast as a professional bowler, Kirk Von Kruger, who will meet the winner of this game. Yeah, in the semifinal, Kirk is going to be very tough. He'll be interesting. Okay, now it was the old third frame, spare working. Second game of the afternoon. Is that a confident look on his face? The 1991 player of the year, David Ozell, went into a slump in 92. Earlier, he explained how he dug his way out in 93. Well, the public just doesn't realize what it takes to have a $225,000 a year out here on tour. It's nothing short of picking five out of six numbers in the lottery. Um, in 92, uh, tight lane conditions and the lack of equipment to handle it kind of uh, got me in trouble. So, uh, you know, I went to work on my game, learned how to adjust my speeds, and came out in 93 with better equipment and became a better bowler. And uh, now I just strive to be the player I want to be. So the man who won four tournaments in 91 to become player of the year has left to 316. That year he won the AC Delco, the Showboat, Tournament of Champions, and in Rochester. When he says lack of equipment, uh, the whole bowling industry was going through the transition from regular urethane bowling balls to reactive urethane bowling balls. And uh, he just wasn't armed with that type of equipment in the middle of 92. He's made that change and he's ready to roll. Two pens separating these two champions, Ozio and Ward. Locally, in Wichita, Riverside Park is a place where children can play and where strollers can spot a work of art. Looking uh, at the standing room only crowd, and um, a few moments ago, David Ozio had this slip. Okay? To me, it's a stick. <laughs> Whatever. But anyway, he um, he did all right, marked with a spare, and he has a two-pin lead on Ricky Ward, who's now shooting in the fourth, with a spare up. Second game for Ricky, won the first one, 279 to 200. Okay, Bo. Thank you, Chris Schenkel. With me is Kirk Von Kruger. Kirk, uh, this is your first television performance. However, you have a unique style where you never look at your opponent. Uh, what is the reason for this? Well, I started doing that a couple of months ago. Um, I found that uh, it helps my concentration. And uh, I used to get involved in everything that went, around, went on around me, and uh, it helps me keep focused. A little nervous? A little nervous. That's important. You're going to do very well. He's coming up next game, Chris. Back to you. Mm -hmm. Seven on the left lane, Ricky Ward. Kirk von Kruger, former Navy air traffic controller. 
now. No Ricky Ward's approach to this. The 2 7, flat shot. Oh, not flat enough. Ooh. And a, Ozio leads by 14. What a reprieve for Ozio, who has really had two marginal shots on the left-hand lane. Chris, as you said, he's had trouble with the approach. Whether it's a stick or a slip, it's still trouble. And so right now he finds himself in the lead by 14 pins. Gives your marginal thoughts, too, doesn't it, when you're competing? Boy, that is an excellent point. And I think that the only drawbacks we see in the industry, or even hear the players talk about, is you see this ball drifting high the three six spare about the synthetic lanes are not the lanes themselves the surface the approaches are unpredictable some days they're slippery some days they're sticky sometimes the left is sticky it's hard to control successful on the three six and david's still troubled by it but they work it out there The wizard, as I like to call him, Mr. Practice, practices over 100 games a week. Pretty standard style. He has almost perfect form. He starts here. He'll be right around between the second and third arrows. But check this arm swing out. Perfectly straight. That's beautiful. 5'11", 175 pounds, uh, 39 year olds. And the 25-year-old, Ricky Ward. Another tremendous arm swing as you'll see him coming right down. You see that little seam in the lane. It's filled with epoxy, so the lane's very smooth. We have a seven pin on the right lane for Ricky. The first solid tap we've seen of the match for Ricky Ward. He left a couple of six pins to open this match and had what we call a week seven in his 279 opening game. However, this was near perfect hit, got wrapped. Okay, the leading money winner thus far this year, 210,810, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Walter didn't compete this week, and some of the other solid name stars as you look through the top five. Now, here's the players on a record average pace. Arnold, Amleto, Monticelli, Foss in second, and Walter Ray. The record is 221, held by Mark Roth. Strike in the seventh frame for Ricky Ward in our second match here in Wichita. This break and then we return. When we asked them... You're looking at the tournament later, 21 titles, Mike Alvey, the PBA president. Tough man to knock out of that number one position. He threw a double in the tenth against Ricky Ward last night. Now, you look at David Ozio. See that one shoe? He discarded one. Actually, he says the approaches are fine. He must have gotten some perspiration on his left sliding shoe, causing him to stick. He's made a change, as all these players carry tons of custom-made shoes. Let's see if it works. Sure did. Sure did. Give him a big double, and his lead is out to 22. You know, that's a point that we over and over and look sometimes as you see the reaction of, of David Ozio on a perfect shot, hitting the line solid. When, as you say, Chris, just the idea of knowing you're going to be solid will help you make a good shot. Players carry six, seven, eight bowling balls. They also carry five, six, seven pairs of shoes, different heels, different sliding soles, everything to accommodate the, uh, the approaches that we hit around the country. say uh, custom made shoes <laughs> and here's a custom made strike you're right Chris the head pin goes the sideboard it does the damage around the two four five and eight and yet it's the eight pin that twists around and gets the seven that was an unusual strike and Ozio likes it as he's opened up a 32 pin lead on gutsy little Ricky Ward he needs to strike right here Chris, just to answer your question, most all the players have their mm -hmm. shoes made. I mean, you, you just can't bowl at this level uh, and depend mm -hmm. on house shoes or something like that. Not that there aren't good brands out there, but these players like complete comfort. Okay. 
Ward's still in this match. He's only trailing by 22 pins. He has a possible 226. Ozio going at a 218 pace. Nope, the seven pin. Well, two key seven pins. One in the sixth, one in the ninth has put Ricky Ward in a position where he needs to throw strikes and David Ozio has to have some problems. Tomorrow on ABC Sports, we begin with live coverage of one of IndyCar's most challenging tests, the Michigan 500. Then the racing action continues with the grand finale of the International Race of Champions. All tomorrow, ABC Sports. Chris, your buddy Phil Apaldi is leading that uh, IndyCar series this year. Right at the top. Mm, he's, he's, he's so smooth. So is Paul Tracy, his teammate. <laughs> so is Roger Penske, who owns the cars. Ozio apparently has corrected his shoe problem, which was basically perspiration dropping on the synthetic approaches. Ozio sets up make sure his ball is in a perfect, comfortable position, and he resets his eyes. He really isn't worrying about his ball. He wants to refocus. You don't want to keep your eyes on the target too long. He's going five now. Hey, David, I think it's the 10th frame. Rio due up again. Maybe I've lost track of the score here, but Wizard should be up finishing this game out for 248. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Frank Esposito, he'll he'll let him know. This man is out of it. Ricky Ward, that's the 10th frame. Best you can bowl, it's 205. David Ozio is sitting on the bench. He should have been finished. So to update the folks watching at home, they really didn't bowl out of order. <laughs> Ozio will finish up a possible 248. He has the match well in hand. No matter what he gets on the shot, he will meet. Kirk Von Kruger. Okay, Ozzy will be in the 230s. If he makes this, the uh, 310 split, it'll be 236. If he gets nine, it's 235. There, he did it again. Oh. Tip of the day, stick at the line, and make the split. 236 for the winner. David Ozzy will meet. Von Kruger. This week's Choice Hotels International Tip of the Week features Dave Davis with some weighty advice. ABC Sports presents a winning never gets old bowling tip brought to you by Quality, Comfort, Clarion, and Sleep Hotels. Here's bowling great Dick Weber. As you get older, you lose stamina. Joining me today is bowler Dave Davis, who seems to defy that principle of nature. On his way to victory in 1975 at the Firestone Tournament of Champions, Dave, you had a lot of stamina. But 18, 20 years now, you seem to have never lost that stamina. Well, Dick, what I did was a big secret. I dropped the ball weight a pound to a pound and a half. Well, people are really concerned about a drop in weight and reducing the pinfall. Now, actually, I think my pinfall is just as good maybe even better. The solid pocket hits carry just as well, and as you can see here, the light hits carry even better. We'll take it from Dave Davis. You can drop a pound or two in weight, not, not lose that pinfall, increase your average possibly, and have a little more consistency. So remember, winning never gets old. Ricky Ward defeated Brian Goebel 279 to 200. Then David Ozio, fighter Texas, came in and eliminated Ward 236 to 195. Ozio moves ahead, now another left-hand opponent named Kurt von Kruger in our semifinal match, the winner to meet, Mike Albee, who is our tournament leader. Speaking of tournaments, our 24th stop next week in Edmond, Oklahoma. We'll see seniors, we'll see the touring pros, we'll see the opportunity for them to earn a lot of money. You're right, Chris. Probably the most interesting format I've ever seen. A lot of the touring players are talking about it. Basically, our first game in the championship round will be two seniors vying for a basically the number one spot at the end of the tournament. Now you'll have the second and third qualifiers among the regular pros playing the first match. Uh, the winner of that will bowl the tournament leader for the title. That will be the third game on the championship. 
then the seniors winner, the man who won the very first game among the, between the senior players, will bowl the tournament leader for a $25,000 bonus. So basically, you're going to get to see two seniors bowl in two of the games and the touring players in three of the games. An exciting format. A guy can take away 63000 bucks next week. It's great. If you're at all confused, just <laughs> join us at our regular time, 3 Eastern, and uh, you'll see. The Choice Hotels International Summer Classic, and it is just that, a classic. I think you're going to be surprised, a lot of the people, how good the Seniors Bowl. Oh, extraordinary. All right, here's our first look at Kirk Von Kruger, 39 years old, as we said, a Navy veteran with a five-step approach. <laughs> First time on national television, and that should, uh, well, the adrenaline won't be pumping quite as fast. It takes a few frames to loosen up, especially mm -hmm. when you got a player of Ozio's caliber sitting right next to you. As he matches you, 236 and seven strikes in his victory over Ricky Ward. Ozio started bowling at the age of 16, a 142 average at the age of 16, and if nothing else, uh, more than t solid practice has made him one of the greatest players we've seen in the past decade. Pressure now is on Von Kruger of Pensacola, Florida. Strike up, shooting in the second. He has three young sons here, and they're out of their seat on every shot, rooting for dad. Well, you look at his dad's style. It's a uh, self-taught style. It's five-step delivery. He has a slightly bent elbow right here, a little bit like the great Earl Anthony, and a release much like Earl Anthony. Very simple, behind the ball, good wrist action, and his first two shots on national television have been perfect as you look on to mm. the Von Kruger family. Mary Listen. and Christopher and Aaron and Curtis. In that family, there's also a married daughter watching i'm sure her name is elizabeth well i watched those children all day long as their father made a charge to the top five and they are just something to behold very well behaved delightful to be around and they really were he turned to be the darling of the crowd now both players are perfect through three frames well we are all even running that one out is david ozio Ozio, one of the great championship records rounds of all times. He's a 222 average with over 25 performances. The full grip, the extended index finger. He's solid on the ball. He doesn't re-grip and straight behind him. Leaving only the seven pin, the young 39-year-old. In his 26 television appearance, he has 10 titles. 4 7 10 standing temporarily. Good break, breaks down two of the pins, has a simple spare, the seven pin. This is our semifinal match. The winner to meet tournament leader, Mike Albee, here in Wichita. Local artists have been. We're looking at uh, Mom Mary, Kirk Von Kruger's wife, and their three sons, Christopher, Aaron, and Curtis holding hands and a few moments ago they had a family huddle. Quietly but enthusiastically cheering this man on. Hey, four bagger. Okay, Bo. Thank you, Chris Shanko, our tournament leader, the man with 21 titles, Mike Albee. Uh, 
perspiration has been a big problem here. We've seen it with Ozio with the approaches. I saw players yesterday and even out there today having trouble holding on the ball. What do you do to overcome the perspiration to get a solid feel? Well, you got to take your time out there and make sure your hand's completely dry and always blow in the hole to get a little warmth in there and, and so it feels nice and tight. So uh, just have to take your time, make sure you got a good grip. How about the 25-second rule? Oh, I, I usually get off on 12 or 13 anyway. I'll be all right. All right. He'll be back. Oh, boy. Kirk Von Kruger, Pensacola, Florida. Imagine that. 21 years in the Navy. Of course, he bowled during it in regional events. And his family is having the time of its life. Four of them here. And he has strung five. Now with three in a row and then marking with spare in the fifth frame, David Ozio. Ozio is such a confidence player. As he's made the top 24 are the what we call the final round here on the PBA Tour for the last eight consecutive weeks. And that is tough to do, as you see Von Kruger looking away. He will not look at his opponents. He doesn't want to have any influence on his game. That's hard to do, Chris, when you know you're maybe a little bit ahead and you hear the crowd go, oh, he says, what did Ozio leave? Well, oh, I'll see right here as he left the 3-6-10. He's left that type of combination mm -hmm. a few times a day. He's been perfect in converting the 3-10 and the 3-6-10. Uh-oh, another shoe. Ozio just has to get the ball over here in the 3-6 zone. He's going to throw a flat shot that's going to skid right on through this area with a very uh, high surface or low surface friction ball, and he's right on target. Not only um, alternating balls, but shoes. Well, what's happened really is the center of the approaches are probably a little bit stickier than the outsides. We often find that with the synthetic approaches. There's nothing you can do about it except mm -hmm. do what Ozio's doing. The players change balls, the players can change shoes. It's all part sure. of the game. Well, it's an eight pin breaking the string at five. There's that family. <laughs> Boy, he got a good break there, Chris. He pulled the ball way inside target, and he would probably be thinking of looking at a 4-6 split, and ball kind of sets up. He leaves the 8-pin as the 6 trips out. Simple spare. He will maintain lead of 20 pins through 6 frames. Okay. 39-year-old Kirkman Kruger joined the tour late, and here's why. Well, I put uh, 21 years into the Navy, and uh, I felt uh, at the time I was able to uh, compete on the PBA Tour. I still had uh, eight years to do in the Navy, and I couldn't throw away 12 years of my career. And uh, I wanted that retirement check, so I put in my 20 and then decided to come out here and bowl on tour. Now leaving a 7 pin. And to put a little addendum to that story, his wife Mary was also an air traffic controller in the Navy with 20 years retirement, and Kirk, her husband, was the boss. As you look at Mommy, they're talking to one of the children, saying Daddy's got a 19-pin lead through seven frames, boys, if he converts to seven pins. Oh, no, no, no. Wow. You can't miss single spares like that in against a tough opponent like Ozio. He had Ozio on the ropes, gets a bad break by leaving the solid seven. Then the ball slips off in the left-hand channel in his lane. His uh, lead evaporates down to just eight pins. Okay. A trip to the zoo always seems to be on the to-do list in the summer, even when the thermometer rises above the 100 mark. However, shade is also welcome. David Ozio's opponent have an open frame last time up. Now with a spare working, Ozio shooting in the seventh of our semifinal game. Clint Eastwood is back as Dirty Harry, and this time he's in the line of fire when an assassin with a celebrity hit list targets him. Clint Eastwood stars in The Deadpool a Sunday night movie tomorrow on 
ABC. David Ozio, eighth frame, a chance to take the lead after the errant miss by Von Kruger in the seventh. A ten. Well, that's about as good as you can throw at David Ozio, the solid ten. Spare here, he'll trail by eight. Kruger has got a temporary reprieve. Once again, Ozio changed shoes and balls for that spare. Uh, seems to have the combination to make it all work. Moment of truth for Kirk Von Kruger, 39 years old. He was the All-Navy champion in 1975, but he never bowled against competition like this with this much pressure. A seven. Well, same shot he had in the seventh frame. Didn't get a good result where he left the solid seven. However, this time it would behoove him to convert the spare because if he doesn't, he will trail. No. No. Well, Mary can't believe it. The children are disappointed, and I know Kirk is feeling the pressure of national television. Once again, he goes for the seven pin, and I watched him yesterday. He made that seven pin almost every time here the ball slides out of his hand, whether it's the grip, the nervousness, the oiling pattern. But the children know that daddy's in trouble. He better throw some strikes. No. It's not over, kids. Um, let's look at it this way. Your daddy trails by three pins if he can convert to spare. Ozio has two frames left, and daddy still has the tenth. The role of the mother when the times are tough. Acknowledging the chairs of finally marking that spare. Right now, the destiny of the match is in one of the great bowlers in the world today's hands. Ozio leads by three. He's up in the ninth frame. Can shut out Kirk Von Kruger. All right, Ozio, in order to shut out Kirk Von Kruger, needs a strike, eight, spare, or better. If he gets anything less, Kirk can win. The pin action of Ozio, headboard to the, head pin to the sideboard, takes out the four, five, and seven, and sets up the 10th frame. You see the scout, the messenger 10 head pin comes over and takes out the 10. Mm. Kind of a, a sidebar note here. Two of the best fathers out here on the tour. Good family men, a lot of children, bowling against each other. One of them has to win. Ozio has the advantage right now. Nine on the first ball is Lock City. His wife back in Vider, Texas, and Heather and Haley, sure happy. Conversely, the Kruger fate shows it all. by David Ozio to go with his 236 of his previous victory.
Kirk has bowled very well. He makes this 4-7 spare, saying a little something to his children. Uh, he'll have 214. I think this experience will be very good for him. He's going to get a solid paycheck this week. Mm -hmm. And uh, that lovely family will be back again. That's right. It's his very first telecast. Previously, he had cashed in 12 tournaments three times. This is we've seen missing a spare somewhere has been mm. such a big part of the game. So it's a 239 to 214 game. Ozio against Albi, another left-hander. Congratulate the Von Krugers as ABC Sports presentation of professional bowlers will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Okay, here in uh, Wichita in the first match, Ricky Ward defeated Brian Goble 279 to 200. Then uh, David Ozio defeats Ward 236 to 195. And uh, then the father of four, Kirk Von Kruger, came in, the Navy veteran, kept it interesting against Ozio 239 to 214. Ozio now against another left-hander, PBA president Mike Albee. And we're we're uh, pleased to congratulate uh, Kirk Von Kruger. First time on TV. You were a star. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Your family, too. Oh, they're great. They're my inspiration. They're, they, uh, they got me out here, and uh, they're keeping me going. Well, Kirk, a couple of things. You left two seven pins. If you carry them, you lock out the match. You'd be bowling for the title. Uh, basically, what do you think went wrong on those two shots? I, um, I really, I thought I made two good shots. Uh, what, went wrong, what actually went wrong is I uh, couldn't pick up my seven pins today. <laughs> Just any consolation, Mike Albee, who has won 21 titles, missed two seven pins in 1981 in Paris, France, to lose a title. And ever since then, he's been one of the dominant players in the PBA Tour. And maybe that bodes well for you. I hope so. We want, we want you back uh, soon, Kirk. I'm looking forward to it. OK. Thanks a lot. So. Devon Kruger's made a big impression on everyone here in Wichita at the North Rock Lane. So now, his 68th time on television, Mike Albee, player of the year in 89. He was rookie of the year, the only one to get both of those titles. First shot, left lane. Okay. Well, two of the toughest going here, and I expect a good match. Before we went on the air, I was chatting with some of the other pros, and basically the consensus would be an Ozio Albi match, and it has come to this point. Let's see which one has it in the championship. Well, two players of the year are dead even after one frame. North Rock Lanes, owned by John Crum. Really a terrific facility of 48 lanes. Two players with solid footwork up there. David Ozio has made adjustments all the way through the championship round so far. He seems to have the combination. One pair of shoes for his strike ball, another one for spares. So he has double here in the championship match with 23,000 to the winner. If Ozio has to change shoes very often for spares in this match, he won't win because Albee doesn't give them away, and I don't expect him to shoot a bad game. Again, even after two frames. All right, let's look at Albee. Drops that left shoulder, but he drops it in line with his target line. At the top of this swing, we have a freeze. His target is right in here. He wants all of that to go straight along there. So he opens his shoulders up just that much. And notice how solidly he hits the line. You don't want to get up on your toes, I said that earlier, and get over your heels. The ball hit weak. You don't want to be so far back on your heels that the ball hooks early. So both players in balance and both off to a perfect start. Professional bowler. Mike Albee, all the PBA members, he has to be the number one ice hockey fan. 
has over a million baseball card collection. A little bit different style for both players. Ozio is playing a little bit on the left side. He's around the center. And he's throwing a pretty straight shot. He's not throwing the big hook ball. Ozio down the line. Three frames, six strikes. Leaping across the ball return, David Ozio. The left-hand lane hooking a little bit more than the right. You'll see that Ozio will take a slightly different position on this lane than he had on the right-hand lane. He'll be a little bit farther left on the approach. He'll slide over in this area. His target will be right about here. He'll have a little more follow-through. Hopes to make it four in a row. David Ozio as it's over 100 degrees outside and our trophy which will go to the winner has found one of the few cool spots in the town. Here Mike Connor our commissioner of the PBA has uh, joined us often and we're glad he's here in Wichita for this event and we're in the final game Mike Albee three in a row needs to strike here to Keep even. <laughs> Twenty-one time winner Mike Albee outlines the simple secret of his success. Well, the thing I feel like has really helped me out the most is my mental game. I feel like I've been able to work very hard when things are going bad to get them back together. I can cover up a lot of mistakes physically by being strong mentally. pretty strong physically. Both players perfect through four frames championship game. Now he has five in a row. Well, a big part of professional bowling is confidence, and both these players have all the confidence you need. Both have been players of the year. That means you've whipped everybody. So, what the winner of this game will come away with is a little more confidence, but nobody will have their confidence broken because these players know they are among the best. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. We've had ten strikes, five frames for each pro. Ozio working the shoes, working the rosin bags. Uh, both these players uh, had somewhat of complaints yesterday about it being so hot that they can't change the weather. Just get a good solid grip on that ball and be ready to go. playing a much bigger hook than his opponent. He'll start over here on the right side of the lane, drift in here, and play a big swing out. Excellent carrying shot. Now we have two pros. We've reached the halfway point to perfect 300 games. Speaking of opportunity of money, Marshall Holman is number one all-time money earned on the lanes. And you'll see Mike Albee at the bottom with 1,345. He can beyond, he can pass Earl Anthony with a win today. But that's a tough assignment because both have six in a row. Albie, you can see to the extreme right side of the lane playing a big hook from the inside line. Mike needs five more.
strikes in a row by a Texan and a Hoosier. Viter, Texas and Indianapolis. Seven. Watch the five pin here. Ozio really gets hosed on this shot. He should have had a strike. The head pin comes around, takes out the ten. The five should have taken out the seven. He should have been perfect through eight. Okay, but he marks with a spare. Alby is up. Eighth frame with seven in a row. Ten thousand. Tammy back home along with their son Chris. The match is far from secure. Mm. set up a tie at 279. Star performances bow by both. Yeah, Chris, I bowled as a professional for 33, mm. 34 years, and the players just keep getting better and better, but these are two of the very, very best. Ozio must strike, though, to have any chance of winning. Second this year in Fresno. Puts himself in position to force Albi to strike to win the tournament. Mm. Look at the scoreboard. Ozio, if he strikes two more times, will have 279. And that would force Albi to strike. Forget the 300. He'd need a strike to win the tournament. Mm -hmm. of what they do, Bo. No doubt, Chris. Great skilled athletes. Strike here would force Albi to strike. Six two thirty nine for this man, David Ozio. Here is the PBA president. Needs a strike to win the tournament. Anything less, we have a tie, a roll off, or a loss. It's all on this ball. What a competitor! Now let's get him two more, Bo. 
getting two more, huh? Well, a lot of things happen here. Albie needs five pins to secure the tournament. Ten strikes in a row, a perfect game. He's also secured a place for David Ozio as having the highest losing score in the championship round. Two more for a perfect game. what Tammy and Chris are doing back in Indianapolis. Oh, what a thrill for everybody. Walter Ray Williams Jr. had the first 11 in a row this year and left the 10 pin. Let's see what the destiny of Albie is. Mike Alby, Title 22. Johnny Petraglia congratulating him. Johnny once had 11 in a row and ended up with 298 in the championship round on ABC. Albie has done it all. We'll be back to talk to Mike Albie. Ten thousand dollars for three hundred in just a moment. Okay. The winner here in Wichita of the tournament, twenty-three thousand. <laughs> And the trophy, Frank DeSocio, and the proprietor, John Crum. Mike, is it okay if we get that out of the way? You bet. Yeah, anytime. <laughs> I'm ready to take it all in. Well, Mike, first of all, let me give you your $100 that we give traditionally for 300 games. And I'd, I just, I'd like to give you this trophy from our great city. We love having you come here every year. Mike, congratulations again. Right, thanks. Congrats. Now, let's get John Crum with uh, the cash. Well, I'm sure he wants the cash here, but he's more interested in what Mike Connors has got, too. Not at all. Yeah, we called that back here in the third frame. We just didn't know who was going to shoot it. I didn't either. <laughs> Mike, since you collect pens, victory pens, John, this is the head pen of that rack. They're going to give you the whole rack, you know, of the 300 games. Is that fair enough? That's fair enough. The commissioner of the PBA, fair enough, with a $10,000 check. Congratulations, Mike. It's outstanding to have you as our champion in a... $10,000 award for the 300 games. Thank you. Very Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, first of all, my special thanks to, to, to John Crum and his family. Uh, I've enjoyed coming to Wichita since 1981, and they've done a great job to us. Uh, we always look forward to coming back. Frank, a uh, good friend for many years, and I enjoy coming here. Uh, winning here in 89 in the Masters was tremendous, but nothing can beat this, and I owe it all to everyone out there. Thank you for following us all week. We appreciate it. And this first 10 was going to go to everyone in my family because uh, without them, I wouldn't be out here. And hello, CJ. How are you out there? What about that last shot? What did that feel like? Well, the last shot uh, really wasn't that bad. Actually, it was the first one to 10th because uh, without that one, I didn't get to this. And without that, I wouldn't be the winner of the Wichita Open either. So the first one was a big one. I won that real bad. The last two really weren't that bad. David Ozio was pretty good today, wasn't he? David Bull, tremendous. Uh, Every game he bowled, David always bowled tremendous, and obviously he pushed me all the way, which made it forced enough for me to push me to get 300. Thanks for our sixth five, five, 300 on ABC. Thank you, Mike. That's it. For Bo Burton, I'm Kurt Schenkel. See you next week from Edmond, Oklahoma. Goodbye. Woo!